Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming potential tropical cyclone for the Gulf states. I know, it's crazy. We're possibly going to be getting to an early start here, but we have a lot to talk about. It's only a possibility at this point, so we're going to be talking about our confidence tab towards the end of this video as well, which is going to be obviously something you're going to want to uh, take a look at as well because our confidence isn't super high in this threat. Now, you might notice throughout this video that a lot of the uh, guidance is a little bit old. I'm actually traveling right now. I'm actually on vacation for the first time in a few years. This is the first time I've tried to travel since I started doing YouTube, so it has been a long time for me. A lot of these videos, including this one, are made on a different day than when I'm uploading it. So you're just going to have to bear with me, but I'm still able to bring content daily, which is really, really great, obviously. So first things first, we're taking a look at our cyclonic vorticity here. And this is what's really going to show us the rotation. As you can see, there isn't too much around here for the Gulf states yet. This is going to be approximately Saturday, May 15th. I might even upload this video a little bit after that. So uh, that is a possibility at this point. Let's just take this towards about Thursday morning. That's going to be May 20th. And as you can see, we get some more of those yellows and oranges moving up near Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti. This is so weird to be talking about the tropics, guys. It has been a long, long, long time. Uh, but this is going to indicate a little bit more uh, rotation there just in the atmosphere, uh, indicating maybe some tropical activity is potentially getting started in that area. We're going to have to really, really watch that. Now, we're going to move on a little bit further with this. And by the time we're taking a look at about Saturday morning, approximately 2 a.m. or so, that's going to be May 22nd. You can see some more of those reds and oranges and yellows just in general around the Cuba area, around Florida. That is potentially uh, what's going to become a tropical invest. Now, I say possibly because this is a very slim chance, guys. This is no, by, by no means is this a high confidence type event. This is 174 hours out. Honestly, the only reason I'm making this video is one, because there's not much else going on, and two, because this has been a highly requested video. I've had so many people actually ask me about this because apparently there's photos and things floating around from other sources. So I just wanted to kind of hop on here and give you guys my two cents since a lot of people have been asking me about this uh, potential tropical threat that could be upcoming. Uh, obviously, again, the odds are quite slim, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. So there is a possibility we will be talking about a real tropical cyclone coming up uh, over the course of the next week or so. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to move on. And what's going to become interesting is we might even see this tropical cyclone move into the Gulf and towards the Gulf states. I've also kind of eyeballed the possibility for this to possibly move up towards Florida and up the East Coast as well. And this can really go anywhere. And it's so long until this potential tropical cyclone would be developing. Uh, so, so many more different things can happen. Uh, there's a great chance that we don't see any sort of tropical activity whatsoever by the time we get there, but there's also a slim chance that it does occur, and then beyond that, there's many different ways that it could go if it was to develop. So, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on, and we're going to zoom into the Gulf states and take a look at how this progresses on this GFS model from 0Z on May 15th, which again, might be a few days before you're watching this. All right, now here we are taking a look, and this is going to be approximately 11 p.m. or so here on Saturday, May 22nd. And as you can see, there's plenty of yellows, reds, greens going on all over the Gulf states. And that is, in general, some tropical activity that could be getting started within that area. Um, so we're going to be watching this, like I said, extremely closely. Obviously, I think Florida is, has a risk, and in any really, really any Gulf state really is at risk as well. Uh, in play because it's so far out that really anywhere could get hit if a tropical system was to develop. Uh, you're not safe from, from Texas to Florida up the East Coast. They could really go anywhere. Uh, the one thing we do have going for us is the time of year and just really the conditions because this isn't going to be a type of storm that can really develop far, obviously, because of the fact that there is some more moderated conditions as far as the water is concerned. The shear is always a very, very large factor this time of year. During the winter, we see a lot more shear, and that extends into the springtime as well. The more we approach August and September, the less and less and less shear there is, and the more favorable those conditions for tropical development become. All right. Now, by the time we are taking a look here at about Monday time frame, this is maybe going to be about 3 p.m. on Monday or so here, you can see there is multiple areas where there's more rotation. Uh, I'm eyeballing that one offshore of Texas, obviously, that does have kind of a cyclonic shape to it. 
Uh, but then also that huge wave of uh, some more vorticity around for Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. We're going to be watching that area as well. So there's different areas here at risk uh, that really look like they could be some sort of um, areas to watch. As we look at the accumulated maximum wind gusts, so this is going to be through the whole model run, the most wind uh, that this ever shows. You can see it's only around 30 to 40 miles per hour, uh, maybe approaching 50 in some of those areas offshore of Florida. So at this point, the GFS model does not have a massive tropical storm or hurricane or anything like that. Uh, but we can say that there is a possibility of a tropical cyclone. And how intense that becomes, uh, that really is just uh, impossible to say. Although, obviously, with the time of year, like I mentioned, uh, you're, you're kind of going to lean more towards the weaker end of things. Now, I will mention this as well. Our current sea surface temperatures, we have very warm waters around Florida and Cuba, as you can see in those oranges and reds. That's where we're at about 1 to 3 degrees above normal Celsius there uh, as far as the sea surface temperatures are concerned. So that would certainly help the development a little bit. Now, uh, we're going to move on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about the climate of all of this. We're going to talk a little bit about how common would it be for a tropical uh, system to develop this time of year. All right, now here we are taking a look here at our graph that's going to show us how many storms and hurricanes have developed in what time of year. And as you can see, if you look all the way to the left-hand side, tropical storms are possible even before May 10th. And we're at May 15th uh, and possibly beyond, like I said. Uh, I'm making this on May 15th. Uh, so it is possible. It is heard of. And honestly, before June 1st, you can see a little yellow area. That means that hurricanes have also occurred this time of year. So that kind of reassures you and lets you know this isn't something that is known to be historically uh, not really possible. This is something that is really rare, but could possibly happen uh, and certainly has before. As far as the European probability of tropical depression goes, which is 20 knot winds in a tropical system, we don't really have anything. So right now, the European model is not on board yet. As far as total rainfall... We are expecting a lot of rainfall over the next 10 days to cross through the Gulf into some of the states. This model here, the European model, has most of that going to Texas and Louisiana where we could even see 7 to 10 to 15 inches of rainfall occur. I was tempted to say snowfall because of how large those amounts were, but no, that is rainfall, uh, obviously, and that would be a very large amount. Will that definitely happen? I don't really know. Let's take a look at the GFS, and as you can see, it's very different. We have like 10 inches for Florida, whereas the European model had nearly nothing, and then we only have a couple inches for Texas. So that just shows you how inaccurate this is at this point. There are so many different possibilities, but the one thing that they do have in common, and I always try to remind you guys of this, they both have a lot of rainfall. They both have 10 inches plus somewhere so the odds of somewhere getting a lot of rainfall with this tropical wave or tropical cyclone uh, or any sort of storminess that comes from the Gulf, even if it isn't tropical at all, uh, there's a very high probability that we do see a lot of rainfall hitting somewhere uh, as we approach late next weekend and even into the next week after that. The GFS model does have, uh, as you can see on one of those previous model runs, let's see which one this is. This was 12Z on May 14th. It did have a stronger tropical system actually hitting Louisiana. As you can see, those brighter greens and even yellows, this is our accumulated maximum wind gust again. Uh, and this one had 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts there. Actually, uh, yes, 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts there in orange hitting Louisiana. Uh, so this one did have a little bit of a stronger tropical cyclone uh, hitting on that model run. So there has been back and forth. There has been some model runs trending at a uh, larger uh, tropical system. I wanted to remind you guys of something real quick. Um, since I've been on vacation, I haven't really been making the comments of the day. That will be back, when, when I'm back home, that will be returning. So I know a lot of you might be uh, wondering or concerned about that because I know a lot of people enjoy that. Another thing I wanted to mention is I have been posting on TikTok. If you search up direct weather on TikTok, or you can go to our Instagram and click on the link in the bio, which is our link tree. You can find our TikTok there as well. I should really link the TikTok underneath the videos. I'll start doing that soon. Uh, but if you search direct weather on TikTok, you can get some quicker updates. I've been trying to post those daily, which is really, really cool. Uh, so anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a one out of six. I talked about this again because it's been something that has been requested uh, and purely that because this is a very far out and really just highly rare type event that we're talking about in a long range outlook. So this is a very low odd event. 
would not be surprised whatsoever. And matter of fact, I would be surprised if this does end up being a tropical depression or tropical storm or something like that. Uh, I think it's very high odds that we just see really uh, some storminess come out of the Gulf that really doesn't become too tropical whatsoever. Again, I would be quite surprised if this does become a tropical system, but people have been asking me about it so much that I had to make that video. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cadalesa, Michael Buell, Cap by Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen of the day, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, our Weathertop Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and then Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.